We have Mark Price with us today, Mark Skippy Price. He was on Family Ties from his age of 14 to 21. He played the neighbor next door. Skippy, how fun for you, Mark. I remember. That was a good time. It was a good time. I, I, need, to, I need to jump in on the 9-11 thing here and just yeah. mention that. <laughs> honestly, the, the, um, for my generation, you know, it's one of the only things I remember where I was when. You know, yes. I was there when Kennedy assassination. And um, I'm very grateful to the first responders. I want to say thank you to the first responders everywhere because, you know, the police, they take a beating and all these things. Yes. Do beatings, do. But um, uh, the uh, first responders were so brave and they really showed their stuff that day. And uh, I'm so just grateful that they're there for us all, all over the country, including the ones here in the Tri Cities. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you to you all. My mom growing up was a cop. Oh, oh, okay. So. And so uh, <laughs> when you look at showbiz kids getting in jail and getting in trouble, I bet that you were not allowed certain uh, things. I, my uh. mom had a gun in her purse. I wasn't about to mess around. She, wow. <laughs> yeah. She'd uh, come into my room and look it over with a black light, <laughs> like on the detective shows, you know. Other kids would come home, you know, drunk and stuff, but my mom was there sending hair samples to the lab. And, Q-dipping inside my mouth with a swab. No. You know, police do. Yes, she was like CSI, my mommy. Wow. <laughs> she was the wow. real deal. Uh, when Now I think it's so cool, because she was one of the first women police officers, too, mm -hmm. so she fought that fight. Believe me, they didn't. They weren't into it back in the East Coast in the 70s. That's when Police Woman, the TV series, was on and all that. Remember yes, that? yes, I do. And uh, my mom was like one of the first police women. And uh, now I think it's so cool, but at the time I was embarrassed, my friends would come over and they'd see the police uniform and the handcuffs and I'd be like, oh, my mom's a stripper. Oh, 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 <laughs> come on. <laughs> kind of like she's embarrassed of me now. Oh, your son's a touring comedian. No, 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 he joined ISIS. Oh, dear. Okay. So, yes, you are a touring comedian now, and you're going to be at Joker's Comedy Club this weekend. Tonight, right? In the Tri-City, starting tonight. It, I, actually, we were there last night, too. We got the party yeah. started early. And then Saturday night, it's a full weekend of fun at the Jokers. I've been coming to the Tri-Cities now. I don't want to tell you how long because it ages me, but it's uh, been since I was the 80s, the first time I came through there doing comedy. 80s? That's how long ago. I mean, okay, all right. Yeah. I know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I met a young guy today. He was, he did, he, when were you born? 92, he said. He's a, a grown man. Yes. I'm calling him sir. He's born in 92. I will never get used to the fact that I'm no longer the kid. Yeah, but I think um, I think you can still uh, still be a kid there, Mark. I think I think you got some of that. I made my first movie in over twenty years. Right? People know me. Some people know me from Trick or Treat, which was with Ozzy Osbourne and Gene Simmons. It was a heavy metal horror movie back in the day. So now it's called Wigged Out. This new one I just did is called Wigged Out, and it's a kids' film. All talented kids in the cast and stuff. But it's so weird that I'm now that guy. Because the, well, what when, did you play in it? What were you? I play the weather local weatherman and the host of the beauty pageant and that kind of thing. Oh wow! But I'm there with all the girls, and it's like I I just remember when when the adult would come on the set when we were kids and I was in movies and things. You know, Ben Vereen. I remember I made a movie with Ben Vereen. And he played an old grouchy guy and stuff, and he came onto the set, and that was one experience. And then I played with McLean Stevenson. Do you remember him? Oh, oh yes. Yeah, the older viewers might remember mm -hmm. him. Yes, yeah. yes. And he oh, was yeah. so Mash. funny. He was the funniest person I've ever worked with off the set. You know, and we weren't doing He was good, too. On the, on the show, he was funny. But uh, he would tell us stories, and he'd have everybody laughing and stuff. And he was, like, the greatest guy to have hanging out. All those old guys were. I, I worked with I worked Harvey Gorman. Oh, remember yeah. Harvey Gorman? Oh, of course. He had us laughing. Yeah. I got, I've gotten to work with some of the great comedians of all time. Did you pull some, pull some material from them? So do you reuse some of that uh, Well, maybe not the exact uh, stories, but the ideas I try to take into, uh, you know, put into effect uh, a lot that I've been influenced. I've got a lot of different influences, too, because it ranges from way back to uh, Milton Burrow and George Burns and those guys who I got to work with and, and meet and hang out with, believe it or not. Wow. Yeah, I know that old school comedy scene, you know, Don Rickles. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and uh, somebody reminded me today of a story about Rodney Dangerfield. You know, sometimes it's better not to meet your heroes. Really? Oh boy, that just oh. paints a picture that I don't want to know about. No, don't tell us anything negative. No, about no, Rodney Roger. Dangerfield. He was kind of Rodney yeah. Dangerfield. He Rodney. was 
He was just kidding, really, yeah. I think, because he's a comic, he's an edgy comic, you know, he was also yes. a big partier and everything, but this was back in the 80s, and I was just a teenager, and I was like, Mr. Dangerfield, you're fabulous, I think you're so funny, I watch it at the Tonight Show, I'm, a young, I'm 14 years old, I want to be a comedian like you, you know, it's such a pleasure to meet you, and he was like, great kid, got any loots? <laughs> <laughs> But I think oh dear, I do oh. think he was just kidding. Yeah, I'm sure. He, oh, oh no, he had he to, used to just snap off things. I think just oh, yeah. to get a reaction. Oh, oh but he got a reaction. He got a reaction everywhere he went. Yeah, he was a funny, funny guy. So, but I've gotten to work with uh, the old timers. But then the the young, uh, the young, the young set. Uh, a lot of the youngest guys today, you don't even know their names. But um, you know, Chris Rock and John Stewart and a lot of the guys that went on to become famous who were now the. The, the new guard. That's what's so funny is like Jay Leno, Jerry Seinfeld. I've opened for those guys on stage. I've toured with you know people who are now becoming the uh, the Catskill guys. So you warm up and get people laughing so that when they come on, they get a few laughs, huh? Well, that's always a fun thing. I mean, whenever the other comedians make you laugh, you always that's always a good good deal. Thanks to whole night. So so you're traveling around. You know, I did I googled you last night. And oh I wait just a second. Saw, I'm well, sorry about yeah. that. <laughs> Oh, you mean you could look me up on Google? Okay. Right. Yeah. The first thing that comes up is washedupcelebrities.com. No. Did you see that? No. No. I, no. <laughs> I, no. I saw you traveling all over the country uh, doing comedy. So I, I think that's great because it's, uh, it, it's really down to the people level at that point. Well, I choose where I want to go these days, and I uh, love Washington State. I mean, this is like a love affair for me. You know, I was, I've come the last few years, and uh, over the years, it's one of the first places. Seattle was one of the first places I ever went to on the road as a comic. Mm -hmm. And I played in Pioneer Square down there, and oh my God, I fell in love with the whole thing. The city is so beautiful, of course, but then the process of comedy and coming into a town and making people laugh and doing the press and all that. Fell in love with that way back when, and I've been coming ever since, but lately I'm really into it because I've gotten into camping and enjoying the scenic grandeur near Mount St. Helen, Mount Baker. Oh my gosh. I did Moses Are Lake you, the last you're, time you're, I was you're here. You're touring, it sounds like. But really work in Oregon and Washington State. Yeah. And uh, Washington State is my favorite. I'll say it right now, I travel all over the United States, absolute favorite. It keeps you in the West because now you live in California, right? Yeah, yeah. which I, I love California too. Christmas time, can't beat it. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm telling you, in the spring yeah. and the summer and the fall, this is the spot, Washington State. Well, why don't you move up here? It might happen. You never know. Yeah, that's I'm true. Not, I'm not kidding. I love it that much. I really do. You I'm, know, I'm already spending a few months a year here. Yeah. Well, you were telling me before that you've got drought in California. You come up here and you've got drought, but you're working on something actually that's kind of serious about drought. Which, well, yeah. But, what is you know, that? Uh, now, drought is everywhere, but uh, it's more pronounced here in the Tri-Cities than it is in the West. You know, yeah. right? Water is mm -hmm. a bigger issue here. Yes. And um, it's fascinating because uh, I... I started producing shows behind the camera. I don't know if you Googled any of that, but I've had shows that I've created and produced on Game Show Network, and Animal Planet, TBS, all these different things. And one of them was on Showtime, and it was a environmentally friendly show called Green Collar Comedy. That was the name. Hmm. And uh, I learned about this method for growing that nobody seems to know about. And it involves no paid for water year round even in a drought year, even in the dry summer months, even in the dry cities. Hmm. Um, in a desert climate, could work in Las Vegas, could work in Central California, and does. It works in these places, that's the other thing. It's not an idea that could work, it actually exists. And there's installations that have been in for 10 years plus and stuff, I've gone and I've vetted this, so that I know it works. It's steeped in science and history, and it's an amazing thing that nobody, your listeners, you probably have never heard, that if you, use sand hydroponics to grow anything. And that could be your lawns, you know, many beautiful lawns we have in this part, right? In the Tri-Cities. People love their lawns. In the yes, parks, they right? do. And they now be beautiful. they mm -hmm. can have them without any paid for water year round. And this is proven and it's in place and it works and nobody knows about it. And it's using sand. Did you know you can grow anything in sand? No, I didn't. No. Um, well, sand here, uh, we have a lot of our um, Dirt, I guess, is sand, but they add water to it. Especially here in Pasco, there's a lot of yeah. sand, I'm told. Well, yeah. um, it, this is growing in the sand, and it uses a combination of sand hydroponics, which uses 75% less water, again, this is proven and studied, than even drip irrigation, which is considered a conservative method for watering, uses that much less, 75% less. And then once you're dealing with uh, the, a much smaller need for the amount of water in order to grow, 
75% less, you can harvest the rainwater. And so when it rains, and people say, well, there's a drought year, we're not getting very much rain. But yeah. it does rain. It rains at least four inches a year, probably more here. I don't know what the, the minimum is, but in our hardest hit California drought stricken cities, it's four inches. And that's plenty to collect it and save it and store it safely. And then you're able to use it throughout the dry summer months and into the next year when it rains again. Wow. Okay. Who knew? <laughs> I'm serious. This is, I know you're I want, serious. I would, like, I would like if any of your listeners are having troubles with water, if you know any farmers or if you're a farmer and you're having concerns about water because it's too expensive or it's not available, maybe you just can't grow otherwise, this is a solution. And what is it called again? It's sand hydroponics. Sand hydroponics. Combined with rainwater harvesting. And it's when you combine the two, you don't need to pay any water bills year-round. This is proven. I've visited people, they've had their front yard, their backyard for over 10 years, no paid for water, no water bills. All right, I better look it up because wow. my lawn has turned um, <laughs> brown. You got the brown lawn, which is yeah. probably, you know, it's okay, but that's another thing. They're encouraging people, I don't know about here, but in California, they're encouraging people to rip up their lawns, you know, zero scape, they call yes, it. Yes, absolutely. Them, rocks yeah. and sand and desert tolerant yeah. plants and things. And this is not a great idea always either because if you rip up the south facing lawn to your house, your house will heat up. Yeah. And that then people just use more air conditioning, which costs electricity, which costs water. Yes. People don't realize that. You'll end up using more water by ripping up your south face lawn. You wanna if you do that, you have to do it very carefully. You can you can get rid of some lawn and you know, use less water around your property by re landscaping, but you don't want to get rid of that whole south face lawn. Okay. Mark Price, thanks for coming and lightening up our day on this 9-11 day. Really appreciate it. And if we want to see and hear more, we go to Joker's Comedy Club in Richland. This weekend. All right. Thank you, Mark. We're back in a moment.